The nation is saying goodbye this week to the dean. Former U.S. Representative John Conyers Jr. passed away last weekend at the age of 90. He made history as the longest serving African American member of Congress representing Michigan for 53 years before he resigned in 2017. Conyers was a co-founder of the Congressional Black Caucus and a leader in the fight for civil rights and a host of other really important social issues. Joining me now to look back at Conyers' life is Reverend Wendell Anthony, president of the Detroit branch of the NAACP. Thanks as always for being here. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks for uh, doing a tribute to someone who really deserves it and is meritorious for it. So glad yeah. to be here. Yeah, uh, I, I know that for you this is quite personal. Yeah. Uh, and, I, you know, when I think about people around Detroit who mm. sort of inherit the mantle of John mm. Conyers, inherit that voice that he was so great at affecting not just locally but nationally. Mm. I mean, I think you you mm -hmm. you are one of the first people who comes to mind, but but well, it's also a, a personal relationship with it, you, right? It is, and, and that's a big one. Uh, first of all, my condolences are expressed to the family and all the friends and people that loved him. Um, John and I had a, a very close relationship. He used to come to Fellowship Chapel. We would have breakfast every morning in between services. He didn't always come to church, but he <laughs> did come to breakfast. We had breakfast every Sunday morning, and we would talk about all the things on the Hill, talk about the presidential politics, uh, bills he was working on, who was roadblocks, federal judge. I, my only regret, Stephen, is that I did not video those conversations yeah. because for history they would have been jewels. Uh, John was a jewel. Uh, John was an icon. 53 years of longest service, serving African American in the history of the U.S. Congress. He was the dean. Um, he was the go-to guy in Congress. You could not pass anything, particularly trying to mobilize African American Congress people um, and others, without John Conyers, first African American to chair the House Judiciary Committee. Uh, I remember going to a hearing uh, in the chambers there, and he was uh, chairing the hearing. And I, when he asked me to speak, I said, first of all, Congressman, thank you for inviting me. As I look around these walls, it seems to lack diversity. <laughs> I look forward to the day of coming back when your picture, Mr. Chairman, is up there, is up there on the wall. Well, yeah. today, Stephen, his picture is up on the wall yeah. uh, as a chairman of the House Judiciary Committee. And so uh, Detroit has a love relationship with him. So does the nation. When you think of fighting against apartheid in South Africa, John Conyers. When you think of labor rights and human rights, John Conyers. When you think of supporting Martin Luther King when others ran away from the King, mm -hmm. John Conyers. When you think of women's rights, Haitian refugees trying to come into this country and folk in Florida were shooting at them. If you recall, mm -hmm. when they were tr coming over on boats, That's right. some people from their backyards were shooting at Haitian refugees trying to prevent them. John Conyers. John Conyers on so many issues. And so he is worthy of that kind of recognition, and he will never, ever be forgotten. Yeah, when you think about uh, the work that he did, I always figure that there's kind of two different uh, uh, silos you got to put it in. Yeah. There's the work he did in Congress, yeah. and uh, 53 years, it's a yeah. long time to have been there. He got a lot done. But he, he was bigger than just being a member of Congress. I right. mean, he was able to talk about things right. in a consistent and persistent way right. that moved the needle in ways that, that no member of Congress that I can think of uh, in, the, in, the, in the contemporary time has been able to And you're it. absolutely correct. And people around the world respected him. Um, many of the African nations, many of the European nations who were struggling with their own level of independence, the nations in the Caribbean. John Conyers was the man. He would often lead uh, these congressional delegations going to nations to, to do studies to find out what was going on. Remember when we did the Rwanda relief effort? Mm -hmm. uh, you may recall we raised a, the Detroit branch and the community raised a million dollars mm -hmm. to take uh, to Rwanda uh, prosthetic materials, uh, food, cargo vans. The, our issue was how are we going to get it to Africa? We raised it all here in Detroit. I called John. John said, let me call the president. John <laughs> called Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton called back and said, well, all right, we're going to provide a plane for them to get it from America 
to Rwanda, to Rwanda. and we yeah. did. Yeah. Same thing with Project Dream, the Detroit Relief Effort to Aid Mozambique, Zimbabwe, and South Africa. We took the relief effort there. John Conyers again. I'm simply saying that John was the man. He worked with Aristide in mm -hmm. Haiti. Mm -hmm. uh, he worked with Nelson Mandela in South Africa. I mean, John was different. He was one who talked about ending the embargo against Cuba years before uh, Barack Obama <laughs> did that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so he caught a lot of hell uh, for what he had done and for what he, for the, the positions that he championed. His mantra was always jobs, justice, and peace. Mm -hmm. Those three handles magnify who he was, and that's what he dealt with. He was connected to Martin Luther King because of Rosa Parks. Right. Rosa Parks got him engaged in that struggle. She talked to Martin Luther King about this congressperson, John Conyers. They got connected. He was the only congressperson, only politician that uh, uh, Martin Luther King ever endorsed. He walked with Dr. King when he was here, when he's here in Detroit. And so I'm simply saying, you cannot overlook that. And the thing I liked about John is that when the door is closed, the curtains are drawn, and the, he, and the room is closed, John would stand strong. John, if John was for you, you didn't have to worry right. about it. <laughs> right. And he did not mind standing alone. He yeah. stood in the gap. Uh, he stood against federal judges mm -hmm. who were extremists. He stood against Bork. You remember Bork who, yes. for the Supreme yeah. Court? Yeah. He stood up against Ronald Wilson Reagan. Mm -hmm. He stood against <laughs> Bush. I mean, he checked Clinton when he was wrong. And Clinton would not have uh, survived an impeachment had it not been for John standing in the gap. I'm just sorry we don't have him now standing against this tyrant that we have <laughs> in the White House right now. And I yeah. called him that because that's what he is. Yeah. And I'm simply saying... The likes of John Conyers, uh, we missed that, and hopefully God will send us another one. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, right now, I mean, you're right that uh, the Trump impeach, impeachment hearings yes. will, will seem a little uh, emptier without, you know, he's not been there in Congress, but uh, just that voice and that idea of what right. he said. But the other issue that I think is really about to move in a in a way that we never expected is reparations. Yes, and that was absolutely uh, that was his idea in absolutely. Congress alone, right? Just <laughs> like he brought the King bill back for 15 years, mm -hmm. four days after Dr. King had been assassinated, people said it would never happen. Now it's law. Now we celebrate Dr. King, thanks to John Conyers. He introduced HR 40. Right. And he brought it to the floor year after year. And H.R. 40 simply is a commission to do the studying for reparations, the case of reparations for African Americans. Does that mean that we're going to receive a benefit, <laughs> even though we should, like many other people? But it simply says that there should be a study. We should have that conversation. Yes, we should have the dialogue. And I'm glad now that Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee has taken up that mantle. But thank God for John Conyers. We can see ahead because we are able to stand on his shoulders today. Yeah. And he is worth uh, the remembrance, he's worth the recognition that's going to be portrayed here uh, in Detroit. The body will lie in state Saturday and Sunday, the Museum of African American History. And then on Monday, uh, the funeral will occur at the Greater Grace Church. And so I'm sure it will be, I know that a number of uh, congressional uh, black caucus members are coming in, sure. politicians from across the country, entertainers and celebrities, because John was a jazz man. Yeah, right. He loved That's the jazz. Other thing. And he introduced many bills and tried to raise money for jazz artists. When you went into his office in D.C., he would have his albums there. You could go and go and find sanctuary there. He'd have his little jazz, and sometimes musicians would be up in there. And so John was... John was smooth, <laughs> and, uh, and and he was not ostentatious. He was not. He didn't have to be out front. Right. He didn't mind just getting it done, and that's what we miss, and that's what we need. So we look forward uh, to his legacy, and we look forward to the life that he led, and hopefully, others will pick up the mantle and continue his. Well, I mean, work. you see, you see it already. I mean, yes. uh, Elijah Cummings, who also passed recently, I yes. think owes a lot of the things that he was able to, to do to John Conyers. And, and people uh, don't remember, Stephen, that were it not for the likes of a John Conyers, there would not be an Elijah that's right. uh, Cummings. That's and right. I'm sure Elijah Cummings would tell you that. John was one of the original founders of the Congressional Black Caucus. He paved the way. He chaired the committee that, that Elijah Cummings chaired. Yeah. And so 
I'm simply saying, unless we forget, and that's why all these other folk who are now coming behind me to stand up and remember him. Don't be afraid to call his name. Don't stand, don't be afraid to stand up and say, yeah, he did a good job. John Kanye said a standard. Claim it, uh, because he did it. Uh, and uh, if you don't claim it, you're going to lose it. And I don't want to lose it. I want to retain it and own it. And I want to own the spirit. He may have been born poor, but he died rich. Mm. Mm. The legacy. Yeah. The yeah. service. Yeah. Well, the giving. It's always great to have you here, and I'm really sorry for your personal loss, which I know is... is Don't tell me we're out of time, Stephen. We are, we are. We always run out of Why time. Why you always <laughs> run out of time when I come on your show, man? <laughs> we're going to give the whole show over to you sometime, right? <laughs> it's always Thank great you, to sir. have you here. Thank you, sir. I appreciate here. it. Yeah.